He's just a dick. He called us a slug. I didn't call he you a slug. I a didn't slug. call you a slug. You did. I assure you, I, I assure you, you did. I assure you, you did. He called us a slug. I didn't. He, he called us a slug. In what? Like, he said, in context? He said, so, oh, I can't remember his like, exact phrasing, but it was basically about how I'm lazy. I was slug like or something. Sure, we're well, fine. she's been a fat fighter. She's upgraded a snail now. <laughs> <laughs> Is that because I've got a house on us? Yeah. Hmm? Such a prick. Just go well. Stop it, hold me hand. Hiya. Hi, love. Uh, Trogadero's is actually a pub in the, or just on the outskirts of South Shields Town Centre. Actually? <laughs> well, it is actually on the outskirts of the Town Centre. <laughs> so how to be concise. <laughs> Trogadero's is a pub in South Shields. Thank you. Trotadero's is a pub by day, bar by night in South Shields. Oh, he had time to think about it. <laughs> Actually, he had time to think Actually. about it. This is so terrible. It's a pub in South Shields. <laughs> It was a social experiment, I guess, for us. We created somewhere that we wanted to enjoy ourselves, something somewhere that we would like to have gone. I always wanted there to be a changed venue. Um, in the back of my mind, it always sat that I wanted to give people somewhere to go that if they came in dressed as a woman, who cares? Uh, if they came in dressed as a blues brother on a night out, who cares? And I was just nice to everyone, whoever they were. I think if you're nice to people, they're nice back to you. And that's what I wanted the pub to be. Somewhere. How often are you here? Uh, six days a week. Come here since the day it opened. It's just follow the we are those and the and I love Because it. it can be incredibly <laughs> difficult um, for certainly for this area. I was brought up at Horsley Hill. Um, my voice never broke. <laughs> so I was the kid with a really high pitched squeaky voice. I was very, very socially unaccepted. And so as I came into my teen years and drinking years, it was a case of that was just the same, but in pubs and clubs. I come to Drogadero's because everyone's accepting and it's always a laugh. And I'm not, ex I don't exactly fit into any of the cliques or anything, so this is a good place. And like, it's like cheers, it's like whenever you go, there's always somebody you know that's, that's here. And that's just like home from home. Like when I have problems at home, just come here and everything's forgotten. There was no way to go and, and just be yourself. You had to conform. Um, you had to go out and you had to have your black trousers on and you had to have your, your dress shoes on and you had to have a shirt on or you weren't getting in anyway. Trucks have always tried to do as what I've done at the, at the office when we used to have a day on a Wednesday night to make everybody welcome, to make everybody feel comfortable, make everyone relax. And there's a lot of places you can go, especially in Shields, where you can't relax. So we'll be on TV, will it? I don't even wait leaves. It's a pub there around the corner. I do not go. All stuff in here are excellent, friendly, and with uh, the football being on, uh, no trouble. Chilling in Newcastle, spot on, no trouble, and it's really a good laugh. So this is my second home. One of the, the best nights out I ever had um, in South Shields was with my best friend at the time, Grandy, and we went out dressed as the Blues Brothers, and it was back when a nightclub, um, De Nios, existed and it had a little pub attached to the side of it so you had the big nightclub and you had this little pub to one side of it and we went into the, the pub side of it as a booth and there was a couple of people in there and they loved that we'd gone out in this fancy dress they they made a force of us and they, they loved and and we got in this little little clique this little community in the corner of this pub and just had a laugh and it was one of the best nights out i ever had because going out doing something different and being accepted by some strangers whilst doing it, really, really stayed with me. Um, and that was in this, this crazy little pub, but never replicated 
uh, anywhere else. I wanted I wanted trucks to to allow that. I'm the DJ there. I am the owner. Mm -hmm. I am the owner. <laughs> I am the owner and DJ and mum. No, 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 apologise to everyone. She when did you do it? Apologize. What's it like with Lenny angry at you? It's absolutely horrible. <laughs> and advertising person. And I make stuff on Photoshop. And Stevie branded me as the operationals manager recently, so I've decided to absorb that title. I like it. That's why we fall out, you know. That's why we have problems. No, we fall out because you're a dick. You come to a place like this, right? And it's the sort of place where you, you're made welcome, it's comfortable, and the staff are... Oh, the staff are something else, you know? The, the staff I have are incredible. Here at Trocadero's, my job is Daytime Entertainment Coordinator, which is the longest book in the Bible. Question number three. The dessert, Peach Melba, was named after a lady of what profession? Her name was Dame Nellie Melba. What was her profession? What was she famous for? She was Australian. I don't think your profession can be Australian. No. The quiz master's word is final. And on the night times, I work the upstairs bar. All my mates always go, because I've got mates in Newcastle, they always go, come on, Newcastle, my heart. And every so often I give it. I'm like, bye, I'll come. Every time it's the same. There's a VIP area where you needed to put your name on Facebook to get there. You've got to pay six quid to get it. You know, you go there, you awkwardly go up to a girl. Oh, can I dance with you? No. Oh. Can, I, can I dance with you? No. Oh, okay. Here, if you were a boogie, I'd pick you first. Boom, cracking, dance, boogie. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You know what I mean? It's you feel more safe. There is something about all these people that come to trucks who have an acceptance of everybody else. <laughs> you were, were talking about how. Um... Hi, Mum. I'm just uh, in the middle of um, me video head thingy for the dog and um, I'm Bethan. I'm one of the bartenders slash like promo flyers. Um, it's just it's a nicer place to be. Like, I'm, like when I go out, I don't feel comfortable standing in places like like beach or like dusk or anything like that because it just feels like you're meant to be at like a certain standard of like Geordie Shore or like typical like Spice Boy or something like that and I, I just don't find myself to be like that and it's just it's just a comfortable place to be and com like to come and have a good time and like none of the bar staff are like 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 none of them like it's just a nice place to be and like I feel like anybody could come here and have a good time because it's tough. Hi, I'm Jamie, I'm one of the managers here. Yeah, it's me as a flamingo and a truck starter. Yeah. My little trucks. 
time, which has where like been, we could have been anything that we wanted to be, which is on all our chalks merchandise as well. Uh, I'm obsessed with the place, I love it. They've got us managing what I consider our best pub in the world. It's, it does everything for its customers. So I we're doing a Christmas video for our Christmas tune, so we've asked people to come down and dress up all Christmas-like. Well, basically we're uh, looking for a venue where we could kind of, not be given free reign as such, but where they'd just be like, I cool, get on with it, so we thought Trucks is the place to come. No, can I just thank uh, Stephen and Gav, uh, from trucks, obviously, who uh, give us this place sort of free of charge and just let them kind of get on with it and help us as much as they could, really. So, I really do appreciate it. So, does Tony. So, once again, thank you very much. I think it went really well. It seemed to go down really well and it was very enjoyable. So, I'd like to thank everyone that came down, made the effort, and I'd especially like to thank Truck Deos for letting me do that. It's like a nightclub for people who don't like nightclubs. It's just the old perfect fit. Music's not too loud. There's not like so many people that if you move slightly, you're gonna spill some of your drink. It's what would happen if you had if you put all your dreams together, like all the bits where like mad stuff happens, and then you could put it in a building. This is what building for yeah crazy thoughts that should really never get out. This, this is where it's allowed to get out. It's very understandable. Before, like before I started working the trucks, I was <laughs> this guy's not really I was really shy. Um, I didn't like talking to people, not particularly anyway. Um, and trucks really brought us out, Michelle. Like really brought us out, Michelle. Um, yeah, it's the kind of place where I was accepted for who I was. Like it doesn't matter who you are, really. I think you need a place like trucks, um, where you don't have labels. It doesn't matter who you are. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Rebecca, no. long staff. I am a DJ here. Well, I say DJ. I'm an entertainer. And it was just, it all happened so quick. Suddenly I was just part of this mental little family. Oh, what the f oh, we're all getting pins. Yeah, we're getting pins. Right, she's here. Yeah. How are you coming for a pin? Are you more yeah. Oh, we. It's just awesome. <laughs> Just there are no words to describe how good it is working here because it's just it's an amazing place to work. The family, the the bond, and obviously the bosses because the bosses are excellent as well to do anything for you. Yeah, well I'm a qualified joiner. I worked as a joiner for three years on different building sites. I worked at the Cry around the corner, Criterion Bar, and nothing compares. In other places there's no bond. Just unlike here, it's like one big family. You don't get that anywhere else. No, nobody works as well together as we do. birthday last year they had a drag party can you imagine like if they had that in a different bar like and people were just going in on the off chance I don't know what the fuck's going on but because it's yeah it's totally fine trucks is safe you can be who you want to be and not have to look round your shoulder and think all of these lads over there gonna jump us not stressing um, and, and why we've done it here, why we've done it here in this this building in this party is first of all, why not? We've done our best to, to try and break down the social norms here um, in terms of you come in and you're accepted. The only people we don't accept are small-minded, small-minded people who don't accept us, um, and they would also have to make it quite clear that they don't accept us before we don't accept them. Um, Two guys kissing on the bar downstairs or next to the bar downstairs. We've no object. We wouldn't even bat an eyelid to that. If anybody else did, then unfortunately it's time for that person to leave because we're not going to be repressed. Not within these four walls. Uh, this is people's sanctuary and this is where people come to feel safe and comfortable. 
the cross dressing night was for uh, Nimi and the Lord's birthday do. Um, and it's just cross dressing. Like some people think it's strange, and like, I think some people feel uncomfortable with it, but it's for poops and giggles. And we have many poops, and we giggle frequently. <laughs> Fine, if I go to a club, I have a drink. I stand there, mate, I have a drink and have a chat. I don't, I don't go and dance like an idiot because people are going to laugh, take the piss out of us, and probably jump us afterwards. Mm -hmm. In trucks, you can come in, you can do what the hell you like, and no one's going to judge you for it. Mm -hmm. Not the staff, not the other customers, because they're all doing exactly the same as you. In their own way, they're doing what you're doing. How, how do you actually explain chokes to I someone don't. that hasn't been? Like, I put a status the other day saying, how do you do that? It's impossible. Because you can't. Like, if someone told me to do this on stage, I'm like, ah. And it's like, what are you doing in a club? It's like, nah. But it's chokes, like... It's acceptable. It is. It's acceptable. It improved, it's improved my self-confidence so much as well. There was no way I would get on karaoke if There's no way. Kid. There's no way I would have gone out like this or in that thing on all Saturday, the shoot. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah, it's just one big family. Yeah. And this is our little home. Granny <laughs> love! Oh, you knocked me that off, you bitch. <laughs> and then this happens. Bitch out. There's that, there's that boy. James! <laughs> Darling! Hi James! Um, James, mate, I've been a boy. She's been a Jedward. Nice to see you mate. How are you? I'm not too bad, I'm not too bad, yeah. I'm gonna... Go yeah, no worries. Yeah, I'll see you in a We have a very big, um, or a very strong gay following here. We're not officially a gay bar. We never said we have. We've sponsored Pride this year because we have a large gay clientele. And they can come here in South Shields in a working class town in an old pit village and they can be themselves. And that's that's the, the grassroots of it. And all the outside parts of it that come in, your yeah, yeah, punk rockers that want to come in, or your yeah, goths that want to come in, your yeah, charmers that want to come in. They come in and they're all accepting and they're accepted because everybody just What's that fun? That's what we wanted. We wanted to give them a place to, to just come and socialise. But I mean, that's fun. It's just fun. Yeah. Why not? Good, 
The boys are attempting to put a ban out. Five hours to put this in. No, no. Ridiculous. Just to put a little post that thing up. And stupid red shorts as well, man. Yeah, hasn't got a clue. Probably the same. What did we say? Five? Five centimetres, four five? Just guess. Looks like you've done that with the first one anyway. Has uh, Stevie been supportive during this process? This one? Yeah. Not at all. Not at all. He actually normally is a hindrance. He'll come and volunteer to help. he say, oh, I'll come and I'll work with you tonight. Which generally means I'll come and I'll play on Facebook and I'll put a load of shit music in the playlist by this. Oh, they're it. good pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> and normally we're getting Emmy to do that. I've got good crack. Can you go back there as well? We've talked heavily about big egos. We all have them here. We actively seek that in someone to be a truck star. You need an ego. It has to be there. That piss taking just knocks you down that peg when you need it. Because you're standing there, I'm the big I am. We all do it. I do it. I am trucks. Yeah, but I'm trying to do it also, <laughs> Such an arrogant wonder. <laughs> you need that little piss taking, that little nudge, just to knock you down a peg and keep you grounded and keep you in your place. Sometimes I like to touch myself. Uh, probably everybody said this, but I, I feel like it is always me that gets wound up the most. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 Right, Ashley, piss off. It's so cool. Well, it's cool to be kind. <laughs> I'm so, I'm not aggressive, but I think I've just got a really short temper. Wait, Ellen, you're getting a so mad little slut. What's the last line? And I'm just, they just say the things and do the things that wind us up the most because they know that they'll get a reaction out of us. For me as a DJ, it's a good way to deal with customers. If you can manipulate a, a potentially hostile situation to become fun and light and ripping the way we do with each other, then yeah, I guess it does prepare you for it. Because um, people can't be really cutting uh, customers. All right, Ellen. <laughs> she has a beautiful voice. I have a shit voice. Just saying, no? She it's has... okay, but don't stop there, don't stop there. She has beautiful voice. Hair. She has hair. Face. Leave her got hair, you boy! Waistline! Waistline! What is happening now? We live with each other basically. We know everything about each other. And with the personalities, how massive they all are and stuff like that, if you didn't have someone like putting you, putting you down a peg or two, then it would be a freaking nightmare. <laughs> so yeah. Regulation's probably probably the best term to use for it. And it's hilarious. Like <laughs> we literally we live here and we live each other. We live in each other's pockets. We have to have a bit of humour. I think we're crazy. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I can't have gone and been in the truth. Free about the people. Free. 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 Then somebody free to you. You've got to put uh, if I get so many likes on it, so 50, 20, whatever. If I get 25 likes on this status, I'll do this. If it gets them likes, they have to go through with it. It's the rules. Like if it happens in the building. When I first started, I didn't know this rule, and uh, Stevie freed me. So that was the end result. It happens when we're in a forum where everyone's ego is so high. Like last night, 
I'm not going to go on that stage and be anything less than the best. Bethan thinks that in her head. Papa thinks that in his head. So the ego is just going to be wrong. It is a pie. I'll put it on a pie. Well, somebody boot her! I've done nothing wrong. Get here! Ashley, I'm gonna punch you in the fucking face. All I can hear, all the way through, is your you? mouth. I think it is a family. Um, a f fucked up dysfunctional family. But I suppose every family's like that. Um, the call is mum. I suppose I am the mum. A bit. You are honestly a nightmare. It's Kathy. You are honestly actually a nightmare. Let me, it's Gav. Me and you are going to fall out. It's Gav. Me and you are going to actually fall out. Gav's the dad. <laughs> That guy used to love, well, that guy used to be what most people would call a typical lesbian. That's not my view. And uh, the other day she put a status up about, and she, you know, lesbian women going for other lesbians that look like men. And it's pointless because if you're a lesbian, you like women, not men. And, uh, and then Gavin and Hopper decided to object to it. It turned into a bit of a debate and she didn't like it. So it got debated and now they're talking about the fallout. There's just no need for it at all. Oh, doesn't matter. I'm obviously in the wrong. Tinsel. It's all my fault. Hop up. Fuck off. Try and be nice. Tinsel. It's Christmas. She might get tinsel like this. Handbrook. Fuck off, sir. Did you call that handbrook? Yes. That's your championship. I'd rather you didn't. I almost hit us in the face. Okay. Go away. Where to go? A little bit of tinsel. Pop that shit off. Oh. Oh. Stool. <laughs> what now? hell? Jewels? Piss off! It was a jewel. Stop talking to us! It was a jewel. Stop talking to us! <laughs> we fuck off! I hate them all. Three Every ways. single one of them. I think it's too piss. Like, everybody gets it, everybody has it when they get started. I've had it, and the vagina's been on show the whole room, everybody gets it, and you've just got to do it, and it goes away. It's how it goes. It always goes. Try it is. Do you see what I mean? Can you not? Fuck off. Me? Yes, you. What am I doing? Being a mom. How about being a mum? Just shut your mouth. I haven't even been arguing with you. I didn't just call you. Just keep out of it. I just laughed. Just shut up. <laughs> How about go away from us? I'm just sitting. I don't want you next to us. I've got work to do on my laptop look, here. Look, look, look. most about us is the people. I get to work with Gav, which is good. I get to be around people that I love, which is good. The thing I hate about charts is that I'm around the people that I love. Oh, and I get to work with Gav and it's pretty much the same. It's a love-hate thing. Before we started doing this, like, how long ago? Half an hour ago? 45 minutes ago? We were asked to sit at this table and to watch what's going on. If hot back you were on stage, yeah, and people were like talking through your bits, you'd be really pissed off. He's on doing it, 
and you aren't paying attention to us, and when you are on stage you are not listening to us, I'm here to tell you what to do. You started this and you said that you'd do it, so start doing it, because it isn't good enough at all. Every time that we have something like this, um, the last few days are hor horrible, so yeah. And I also have a trap nerve in my shoulder and I can't feel my hand anymore, so I'm happy. I'm a happy, happy bunny. Me and Gav are probably going to kill each other by the end of the night. You coming? I'm not friend. Why not? Why are you What am I doing now? I'm a friend. I'm a friend. I'm a Mine and Gal's relationship. <laughs> they do argue like a married couple and like we'll all make jokes like, oh, I don't like it when mum and dad fight and things like that. But I think Gavin and Demi's relationship is. Being in a relationship with Gav makes this place like torturous at times. Like torturous at times. Our whole life revolves, this is our life basically. It's a bad time at the minute. At, at the minute it's more it's more bad than good. I don't get to see like the one person that I love. I don't want to sound soppy but I don't, I don't get to see him. Nemi needs more attention, more love. Gav needs to work. They have to create a business together while creating a life and a relationship together. We're both stubborn and pig-headed and petty. Oh, we're so petty. <laughs> There was a major argument. Gav stormed off home without his heels on, walked home. She screamed, shouted, got a couple of bottles of Sambuca, went to a party. I just carried on. Just carry on with your job. I went home. I knew the next day that they both be away. I think we have to go from screaming and shouting to shit that's too far back to, to humour because if we don't, then we would rip each other apart and we'll do it in front of everyone as well. The arguments that we have we get incredibly nasty sometimes because neither one of them will back down. So if we don't, someone doesn't crack a smile or, or do something funny, then it could potentially lead to like World War Three. <laughs> no, no, what about the time, what about the time you threw a Christmas tree at me? What about the time that you got drunk on a Tuesday and ended up with a come out with Jamie? No matter what the personal issues, the arguments are, we make this place work. People kind of rely on it now. So if we don't, we're not letting ourselves down. We're not, you know, we're not pissing each other off. We're letting everyone else down. Uh, we're doing this pad talk. We did the last one, and I threw so many tantrums. Should I threw some hissy fits? Because I was getting shouted at after the chairs and over. I stormed down. I shouted at her. And, and I promised her this time. I said, look, I'm, I'm not going to shout at you this time. I will treat you and look at you like a third party director coming in and telling me what to do. Because we have a relationship, I feel that I can, I can back answer where the staff can't. As is, it's not fair. If I'm embarrassed, I'll be embarrassed. If you keep telling me to do something a hundred times, I will do it a hundred times. So we're, we're, we're getting better. I'm reading myself in an awful lot more than uh, we used to. Yes! Well, there you go. You're doing your I'm doing mine. Oh, wait, what are you? All mine? Because I fucking will. Oh, you're not fucking shouting and screaming because of fucking camera on your eyes. So it's hard. <laughs> it's hard being in a relationship with God whilst working together. But then it's good as well. Our relationship is strong but volatile. You know what happens when I get upset? I get disappointed and stuff. She doesn't get angry, she gets disappointed. I don't get angry, I just get disappointed. So these are disappointments. Stop it. Please. Did you just say you don't get angry? I get angry at you, you prick. Let's <laughs> just do it. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I think my and Gav's relationship has always been. I don't. Uh, I don't want to be soppy, but. Uh, I don't like being soppy. I'm supposed to have a rep. I'm supposed to be ye hard. <laughs> no. Um. I think the whole problem with me, Gav, if you want to like psychoanalyze, is that I don't under I, I don't understand why he's with me. I think that's at the stem of 
every single problem that we've ever had. Trust problems, work problems, just generally being problems is that I really don't understand why he's, why he's with me at all. She's just the most wonderful muse you could possibly begin to imagine. We tell, the we tell, we tell everybody she's nemtistic, which is uh, nearly autistic. She's nemtistic. And that's because she can turn her hand to anything, anything at all, and she can master it. Our relationship, because it started on what I would say is uh, unfirm ground, because I was attached to somebody else, we separated. We, we went our separate ways, and I pursued a new relationship. She stayed in touch every single day. Even if it was a simple text message, she'd send the one out. She got a job round the corner from where I had a job. So she could travel on the metro with me every single day. And it became very, very clear, very, very rapidly, the mistake I made. That's right. There's her. And there's nobody else is going to fill that space. There's only her can fill it. She's not comfortable. She gets upset about her weight and such things. I love her any shape or size she goes. Honestly, any shape or size. I don't see a figure in front of me. I see Debbie. And that's it. It doesn't matter what shape it is, it's Debbie, it's mine. And she gets she gets caught up on oh you're not finding me attractive. Of course I do. She's Debbie. She's mine. And she just has to open her mouth. And immediately it's you just you just love her. Most of them <laughs> is no one under 18 can be in here, which is like pretty shit. Mm. And it's a pretty horrific pandemic. Fucking move it, bro! <laughs> what are you talking about, pickle clips? You're pretty fucking I'm real up. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, please. So what's your name? I'm Kalinda, but you call it orange <laughs> Like the energy drink? No, silly, because I'm going to mount and do you. <laughs> 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 uh, um, good joke. She said, do you think we should stop the evil wizard? Yes! Well then, let's go! We're off to kill the wizard, the shit he was horrible. That's funny. <laughs> so Stevie. So Stevie. So Stevie. So Stevie. So Stevie. So Stevie. You can't call him a shitty wizard of Oz. Right, everyone, this is Stevie. Right, first off, we've only got two weeks. There's no show without an audience. At present, we don't have an audience. 
Do you know what show I know, Ben? I've just had all my periods of... What side do you mean over to? I don't know, but mind me ball patch. I've got a ball patch, deal with it. I have got a ball patch? I think I know my own hair. I've had it since I was a kid, hair's never grown there. Oh yeah, I forgot you told us about Yeah, this. yeah I did. <laughs> Yeah. What are you on about? Yes, I have. Hey, all the sexy kids are grey. I'm grey. Yeah. It's alright. Uh, like, got grey. I've got grey chest here. Yeah. yeah so grey beard here. Yeah, it's cool. I'm telling you, grey right. hair's cool. Ah, uh, don't put that on his head. It's a hairspray. I know, but it makes it white. What is that? Just a... it'll make it white. It doesn't come down. You're color. making me hair grey. I'm just giving it some volume. Oh, cool. so, right. Okay. Right. Everyone down here. Everyone. Everyone. Everyone down here. We now know everything, we now can fix everything. We've got all day to... Oh. It's just the notion that we know everything. We do! Everyone, put your hands in, please. Ah, <laughs> What we're saying? Are we going to say... Right, there's a lot of pressure on my hand. I know, who's the one with the fat hands? <laughs> Sorry. Shuddy, are you in it yet? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I want everyone with a real smile. Oh, shit. After three, <laughs> Halloween panto. After on three or, three or after three? <laughs> after three. After three. Before three. Exactly. One, two. Come on! One, two, three. Halloween Panto! Right, get to the positions! Shit, just go three. Today is our turn. Days like these lead to. Yeah, people like to go out for a drink, like to go out and see um, people they might marry one day, but they're really going out to have fun and Trocks is a fun place to go into and I think all ages can recognise that. And again, I would say that comes from the team who are running it or right the way through everybody they employ. It's a real vibrant and um, um, a movable feast and pantos like that. I think Trocaderos is, is different. It's unique. It's, um, I mean, Shields has... Sadly, its nightlife has diminished quite rapidly. But I think what Trocadero has done is put the fun element into going out. I mean, look at the Halloween pantomime tracks. They spent an absolute fortune and they made next to nothing back, but they didn't care because the customers appreciated it. So we are starting to give a massive round of applause for Trucks Halloween pantomime! <laughs> <laughs> This wig is a fucking tour. Look, you might as well all stop getting excited because we're all only here for one reason, and that's to see me. I heard it was the same like Camel Toe. Definitely not. I mean, I, I fully believe I'm going to die on 27 anyway, so... 27? Yeah. 27 now? Yeah, I know. Ah, uh, 33 for me. A couple of months to go, I think. 33 is a good age. 27 is a good age. All famous rockers died at 27. It'll make this documentary famous if we both kill ourselves. I thought about it a couple of times, like just like hang just, yourself in yeah. the middle of a Saturday night off the balcony. Just like, I mean, even if you just, I mean, you know, I think if we did it together, it'd be kind of like, you know, Hero dies and so does Stevie. <laughs> so, like, we've got to do it together because they'll yeah. rob you of any credit. Yeah, that's true. Uh, maybe one day after the other. Yeah. Like, make it go boom, whoa, whoa, this awesome guy. Hero oh, boom, dies, oh, sorrowful see. friend follows. Um, yeah. yeah. You're the friend. I mean, I'm not saying which is which. No, but what I'm going to do is before I die, I'm going to write a poem and then put it in my little funeral pack. I'm guessing my funeral pack? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, get like one of my friends to read it out, say, This was all his favourite poem. Read the whole thing then at the end, say, And it was written by Hopper. I mean, they've lost their favourite person in the world. I want to 
want to see the full team. Yeah, but then see you're the in the next team, right. so I have to... <laughs> against 
all the models of success. Where it is, it's not on a route, it's tucked away, it's next to a library, is that the best place? It's next to a bank, is that the best place for it? But it survives because of what happens inside it. And, and the fact that it goes out and, and supports other artistic products, supports other organisations. <laughs> and those people go back in and, and uh, support trucks and work with trucks. And, and if it wasn't there, well, there isn't anything like it. There's lots of times where there isn't anything like trucks. It is, as I said right in the beginning of this interview, it's unique. And because, unlike most nightclubs, it is actually a centre for the community both in the work it does to support the community and the fact it's open all day and so many different members of the community go in there, some of whom would not feel comfortable being in any other building. So it is that uniqueness um, which would make it a little gem, a little treasure of uh, South Tyneside and the place would be a lesser place without it.